hey, on this week's Hang It the Harvester, we got some new shows to tell you about. Yeah, the snake farm may sound nasty, but these new shows sound pretty nice. Yep. Hey, we're back Hang It the Harvester. Glad you joined us. I'm Rex. I'm Matt. I'm the CEO of the Harvester Performance Center. And I'm the box office manager here at the Harvester. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we, we've been working on our blooper reel this morning. Yes, we uh, have. Yes, we have. <laughs> we, we, we've already got ourselves cranked up, and yep. uh, we, we've got a few laughs under our belt. Yep. And, uh, we, we are um, celebrating our fifth anniversary as, as we record we this. Uh, it's hard to believe we've already got five years under our belts, uh, but we are... You know, going full blast into the sixth year, and just it's hard, getting started. Hard to believe some of the shows that we we are going to announce today or, mm-hmm. or discuss today that, that might have been, um, you know, announced earlier, but maybe we weren't supposed to talk about them yet. Right. So uh, we have got a whole list of stuff to, to go through. Uh, if you saw our, our preview uh, for this show, uh, I referenced uh, Snake Farm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. A few years ago, we had a guy from Texas named Ray Wiley Hubbard here. Yep. He was on the landing pad stage. Uh, this show is supposed to be in the main auditorium. Right. Um, we we love Ray Wiley Hubbard because he tells such great stories mm-hmm. in, in song and you know just as a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one of those Texas guys. He's he's a music legend. He is. Um, you know he, his song Snake Farm is uh, you know just you know one of those classics of the genre. Because Up against it, the wall, redneck mother. Yeah. Oh. Uh, just you know he is is such a funny and likable guy. If you follow him on Facebook or uh, you know social media outlets, you know, he, he goes on these wrong, long rambling explanations mm-hmm. of things and they are just as funny as they can be. They are. Whether intentionally yeah. or unintentionally. And I, I mean he, he writes songs from real life but usually with a humorous bent, kind of a spin, but uh, they're story songs. Mm-hmm. I mean they're they're, um, they're not I, verse chorus verse. Um, he, he has been covered by a lot of American mm-hmm. artists. Uh, Hayes Carl, I know, has covered him. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, Paul Thorne. Uh, Paul Thorne uh, has. Um, James McMurtry, who's been mm-hmm. here a couple of times, has, has uh, you know, taken some of his songs oh, to, yeah. to mm-hmm. new levels. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that show. It's a September uh, show, September 21st, mm-hmm. and um, it is with a band. Yes. Uh, we originally yes. thought it was going to be an acoustic show, just, nope. just him but with a guitar telling some stories, but we do have a band. That usual night. trio. Yep. Um, we, uh, we put some tickets on sale last week mm-hmm. uh, for um, going back into, into August. Uh, Clay Walker, uh, mm-hmm. country uh, singer on the uh, 16th. Uh, that's more of a modern country yeah. uh, take. Um, yeah. uh, he, he's uh, started late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. Been around a while. You've heard a lot of the songs on the radio. Look mm-hmm. at the videos. It'll be reminding you of some of the things that, you know, you, you might not have remembered exactly who sang them. Yep. Any of our shows, you can go to harvester-music.com, um, click on the, the show link, and there's going to be videos there, you know, showing you some of the hits. And uh, if you follow those down the rabbit hole, you're, you're going to be, you know, spending hours on some of the great music that's going to be coming here yeah. uh, to the Harvester. Um, that's uh, let's talk about late um, th- uh, late uh, November mm-hmm. th- thanks- around Thanksgiving. Right. Um, uh, as we we get into the Thanksgiving uh, holiday um, on the twenty second of November, mm-hmm. we have uh, just a classic, legendary pianist uh, George Winston. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think we talked about him a couple of weeks ago, but we want to do think, him a little more justice. I, I think uh, most people. If they've ever experienced George Winston, it was probably through the Winter album. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's done albums uh, covering a lot of the, the music from the Peanuts, from Vince Guaraldi, mm-hmm. Lucy and Linus type things. Um, but he also, he, he's another one of these people that a really musicologist. And so, I mean, he'll do piano stuff. He'll do stuff on guitar. Um, he, he's very good at stride piano. The, the New Orleans style, but then he even does some harmonica tunes. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you, you get to cover all bases. Um, well, the last time he was here, he he was in the building all day and all night. He, I mean, he that was, is part of his contract that he can come in and play our piano to get acclimated to it uh, as much as he wants to. And it's funny to to classify it that way because. Yeah, as soon as he sat down mm-hmm. uh, to that A440 tuning, yeah. he, he knew 
that he had a really great instrument to work exactly. with. Exactly. We, we have a exactly. fantastic piano here yep. for uh, the artist to, to play and for our audience to enjoy. And, and you could tell that you know, he just knew you know, so much about how that piano is supposed mm -hmm. to sound and work. Exactly. Um, you know, he had no issues with, with our instrument. This also will be a benefit uh, for a food bank. So bring canned foods. And what a great week to be thinking of that as, mm -hmm. as we get into uh, the Thanksgiving uh, it, holiday. If, if you buy any merch at his table, all of those proceeds go directly to local food banks. Um, speaking of food, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm on a low-carb diet right now, believe it or not. And, um, you know, one of the things I eat a lot of is salad. Yes. Um, uh, on November 23rd, <laughs> the night after George Winston, we're going to be uh, eating here a for, whole lot. We're going to be here for lettuce. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, jam band uh, mm -hmm. lettuce, uh, just yep. absolute legends in, in the genre. Yep. Uh, they are doing a stand-up show here, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Yep. Uh, we've, we've already had a lot of interest in it. Um, you know, the architect who did the redesign of this building, it's, oh, it's he his is, favorite band. Yes, his favorite band. He, he's just tickled. And, and I mean this, once again, we tell you over and over, if a band has horns, this is the place to play. It sounds incredible, and yeah, you know, we're going to see that you know coming up with "Here Come the Mummies." And, right. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, our uh, is Almond Beds. Are they going to have a horn section? Um, um, I think there is. I'm not real I'm sure. I'm not um, positive. I believe so. Um, um, but this room was built for horns, and yeah, you know, we got plenty of opportunities coming up. Um, the uh, Air Force, uh, Air Force brass Heritage band. Uh, yeah. Brass Band is going to be here on June the 12th doing their uh, take on some classic American and mm -hmm. patriotic tunes. And then on July 28th, we have the Glenn Miller Orchestra returning. Right. If you saw our coverage of our press conference, we announced that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the, uh, the Glenn Miller Orchestra are just great Americana. Um, yeah, they, they, they've got the great American yeah. songbook. Um, you know, just masters of the genre, and mm -hmm. they tour 300 days a year. Yes. And they really love coming to our places. This is the third year in a I, row. I, I believe um, last time, right after they played here, they took off for Japan. Uh, the first time uh, yeah, they, they the did, it, and, and then then the second time too. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, it seemed like we were part of their regular uh, rotation. Right. Uh, this one is out of that rotation. We've been doing those shows in October. Right. This show is going to be at the end of July, July 28th. It's a matinee it's show. A matinee. It's we're a six, a six o'clock yeah. start, so we'll do doors at 5.30. Right. And uh, the matinee show is starting at 6, so mm -hmm. everybody gets home by dark. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a great time to come out. It's a Sunday afternoon, so a great way to, to wrap up the weekend right. uh, with uh, you know just songs that are such classics, you know, you know them, you want to dance to them, you know, we'll have a dance floor so folks have the opportunity to get up. Uh, I think we left plenty of room in the ticket sales to, yes. um, you know, be able Leave to have dance that floor. dance floor. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, come out and swing, you know, bring your swing club, you know, bring your friends, yep. you know, the, the folks that you love to dance with, just come on out and have a great time. It's going to be uh, fun. That, that's, that's what it's designed for. And October 5th, Chris Bodie. Yeah. That'll be uh, another one, much like the Kenny G was last December. Yeah, just um, yeah. one of the world's best at the instrument. Uh, he was a trumpet player. Trumpet player. Uh, I know I've had people contacting me on mm -hmm. Facebook, friends of mine, who are saying, I can't believe you got him. Exactly. You know, how, how did you swing that? You know, not a household they said, name they like said Kenny G. the same G. thing with Kenny G. It was like, how are you getting Kenny G to come to Rocky Mount? Well... Part of that is word of mouth. Part of it is our relationship with the agents. It is. Um, you know, the agents know that you know they're going to be treated right when they come here to Rocky Mount. Uh, that they're going to engage with the audience. And Gary Jackson has those connections. He today. does. So, and and our reputation is preceding us now. It is. Um, yeah, we, we've got some of those people that are coming for the first time. We mm -hmm. have some bands that have been here over and over and over again. Yep. Uh, one of those bands has been here a lot. Our friends, the Embers, mm -hmm. uh, we've already set up their Christmas show. Christmas show. Uh, that's on December the 6th. So, um, yeah, we, we've got plenty of opportunities, whether you want to see a band that, that is a returning band or you know, bands that are here for the first time. Uh, we can't talk about one this week, but you know, those of you who are fans of really great Americana music are going to want to be here in October. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about that one. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we haven't talked as much about... Um, early August either because yeah. um, August the 1st we have Guster here for a stand-up mm -hmm. show. Um, yeah, I think we've got Satellite and a couple of other songs Video, there yeah. uh, 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 on our webpage at harvester-music.com. Uh, they've got Michaela Davis opening for them, but 
Uh, Guster is an English band. They mm -hmm. are um, they are hard to pigeonhole. I mean, they're, they're rock, they're Americana, they're uh, blues. It's, I mean, um, it's, it's more it, of a modern rock it, band. It's adult alternative. It's 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 AAA definitely, but much very very poppy. Yeah, um, I mean, very singable songs. Yeah, I, I think um, you know as, as we you know, head out of this segment, why don't we play out with uh, Guster's uh, song, Satellite, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, you'll get to be introduced to them if, mm -hmm. if uh, you, you're not familiar with them, and uh, we, we want you to know their music. Again, it's a stand-up show, it's going to be right. a good party, right. uh, you know, it's going to be a, a show that attracts a lot of younger people, you know, it's right before college uh, goes back in, right, uh, right before uh, school starts back, so yeah, really great opportunity to come out and celebrate the end of summer. Yeah. Well, we'll so. take a break with that, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Hanging at the Harvester. I'm Matt. I'm Rex. 
And uh, if you hear some noise in the background, uh, we're recording this on the day that Rick Springfield is here. Yeah. Uh, it's incredibly busy. We have a really large crew moving a lot of really heavy equipment, uh, equipment yeah. uh, you know, storage cases and uh, amplifiers yeah. and all sorts of different things around here. So if you hear a little background noise, it's just because you know, we're getting ready for yet another big show. Uh, yeah, this, uh, of course, we, we, we sold yeah. all the seats for Rick yes. Springfield. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you know, filled up most of the standing room right. too. Uh, may have sold it all. You know, we, yeah. we just don't know yeah. uh, until we actually put the show on. But right. uh, you know, um, it's been a really great way to close out April with Rick Springfield, uh, Warchild, and uh, Tyler, Tyler Childers, Childers yeah. uh, on uh, Sunday. So yeah. um, we have a know, big May coming up. We we do. We, we it's hard to believe we're already into May. Uh, you know, we're we're here in the middle of our second quarter of the year. Yeah. And uh, we're starting out with uh, some guys that um, maybe don't have the name recognition, but certainly have great musicians mm -hmm. and a great reputation in Dust Bowl Revival. Yeah. They've got to open for a lot of big acts. They have. And, and again, a lot of the acts we get are hard to pigeonhole. They're a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So that's why we always suggest you watch the videos on the website. Dust Bowl Revival can go from a string band like Old Crow Medicine Show to a New Orleans-style R&B. Sort of like the Revivalists. Yeah, like the Revivalists. So it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great show because there's a lot of variety. It's, you know, some people complain that, oh, well, so-and-so, all their songs sound the same. You can't say that with this band. Yeah. Uh, they, they've got a great style that's all their own, and, and you, know, you love the variety. So um, that, That's on the third. Um, on yep. the fourth, we're doing a local show that's right. a uh, tribute to uh, It's a happy birthday to the blues, uh, 150 years of American blues. Uh, we have members of Groove Escape. We have Joe Joe Stockton. We have Little Roger. We have uh, other guests. I mean, it's going to be just, just a fun night of blues songs that you know and love that have been covered by everybody. Well, and I'm sure you're going to hear some Robert Johnson, oh, maybe yeah. some Muddy Waters, right. some of the great classic. Right. Uh, John Lee Hooker, stuff yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, and, and probably some of the uh, more modern uh, acts as well. So, probably. Um, probably. You know, we'll, we'll see what's on the yeah. set list that yeah. night. And I, yeah. You know, uh, I certainly hope that we record that show. I think that I think uh, it'll be a great yeah, one there would be a, yeah. you know, a, lot of, a lot of interest in seeing that yeah. replay. Yeah, on the night. Yeah. Not um, only here come the mummies, but here come the funk. Yeah. Um, and, and this is one of those nights where we have two shows going on, one upstairs right. and one downstairs. Right. And I'm going to have a really hard time picking between them. Yeah, it's um, going to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Because up, upstairs we've got two funk bands, Joe Hurtler with the Rainbow Seekers uh, opening right. for Here Come the Mummies. Uh, yeah, they're the Here Come the Mummies, they dress up as, you know, Five thousand mummies year old and, mummies. You know, they, they are a funk band, so mm -hmm. think, uh, you know, Parliament of Funkadelic or some of, right. you know, the, the great classic and American And they'll probably um, enter or leave through the audience uh, like Squirrel Nut Zippers did and uh, some of the other things, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, mm -hmm. things like that. Well, when we have a big band, we have a small elevator for them to get to the yes. stage. So, you know, it, like the Glenn Miller Orchestra, they they, right. they walk in, you know, single file. Yeah. You know, and when you've got 20 people doing that, it takes a few minutes to get to the stage. Minutes, yeah. So, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how the mummies tend to do their, their entrance but, here. But downstairs, that same night, Emily Wolf, mm -hmm. um, another one you may not know the name, you Check will. Check out the videos. It's very much, I think we talked last week, kind of a little Grace Potter, a little Florence Welch. Mm -hmm. um, a great blue shouter, you know, like yeah, Janice Joplin. Yeah. Uh, is out of the Austin music scene, yeah. so you know she's got so many of those Texas influences. Yeah. But, a great you know, story to tell. Definitely has a sound all her own. Yeah. Uh, just you know, really looking forward to hearing uh, some, some great blues yeah. uh, out of her. Uh, and it's, it's going to be more blues rock. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's the sort of thing that, you know, you'll want to, it, it, because another, it is so up close and personal, you'll, you'll probably want to bring some earplugs with you or grab some of ours. It's and, another power uh, trio. I mean, we've had several shows like that downstairs. 
and people just go away with big smiles on their face. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, think about, you know, we, we've had some artists like Samantha Fish who just were here, you know, time and time again. Right. But started out on the landing pad, and now right. we can barely contain the audience in, in exactly. the main auditorium. And exactly. this is going to be that sort of thing. We want to bring her back over and over yep. again, so we want strong ticket sales. Yeah. So come on out and support that show. Not a real expensive ticket. No, nope. uh, not at you all. Know, it's uh, it's going to be a fun time. On um, the 10th, another doubleheader. Yeah. Um, yeah, we... For May, we're looking at uh, something like 15 shows and yeah. uh, 19 plus bands right. uh, uh, performing. Um, so, um, yeah, you uh, on the 10th uh, upstairs in the main auditorium, we've got Michael Martin Murphy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the original Cosmic Cowboy. Yep. You know, doing Wildfire, some of the songs that, right. that he was known for. Right. Uh, you know, from sort of that late 70s sound. You know, contemporary with you know, like Dan Fogelberg right. and. Uh, you know, Seals and Crofts, right. some of some of the smooth uh, right. yacht rock type sound. Yeah, he, he was uh, another guy that came out of the Texas scene. Um, you and know, and that, that makes him different from a lot of the more California oriented right. exactly. uh, musicians Singer, who made up that sound. And then he he kind of took over that thing like our friend's son, uh, where he brought back a lot of cowboy influence. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of cowboy songs. And I know that's um, not everybody's cup of tea. No, but you know he has. But, you he, know, but he had he's, regular he's, country hits. He had duet hits. I think he had one with Marie Osmond. Uh, he had a lot of crossover yeah, a appeal. Lot of crossover there, there, appeal. There, so there was the country sound. There was the pop sound. Yeah, right. like, yeah. Maybe not exactly like we had with uh, Ronnie Millsap no. uh, uh, last week, but right. um, yeah, there, there was you know enough of that. Contemporary crossover appeal mm -hmm. that you know he had a really wide audience. So right. uh, we're, we're you know going to have him here uh, at the fun. main stage on the tenth, and right. then uh, downstairs we've got Zach Wiley with John Pence. Right, two singer songwriters out of North Carolina. Uh, you may find your new favorite singer songwriter. Yeah, again, not a, a real expensive show, a right. very affordable ticket. Right. So uh, come on out and, and support you know live music right. here in Rocky Mount. Um, on the 15th, we've got a rescheduled date. We do. Uh, this was supposed to be in February. January. Uh, January. January got, 13th. And got that. snowed out. So. Yep. Uh, Alejandro Escovedo. Yep. Um, uh, you know, fantastic guitarist. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation with, uh, I was on TV, uh, uh, one of the uh, Roanoke stations last mm -hmm. week, and had a really fantastic conversation with another guest before mm -hmm. I went on, uh, talking about some of the great guitarists that we've had here right. at the, the Harvester. And... Uh, Alejandro Escovedo came up mm -hmm. uh, as, as part of that conversation. Uh, we started out with Tommy Emanuel and just worked right. our way through some of the, the yeah. great guitarists that we've had here. But Alejandro Escovedo uh, brings those Latin influences, but also has really strong rock influences. So, uh, you know, people may may think of uh, Los Lonely Boys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, those sort of you know, different influences. Right. Uh, maybe not quite so much the Mavericks, although the, oh, maybe well, maybe a little bit. A little there, yeah, um, yeah. But but, uh, but kind of in the the Flatlanders vein. Yeah, um, with Butch Hancock and Joe Ely and Jimmy Dale Gilmore. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely has his own rock sound though. Yeah. Uh, just you know, thinking of some comparisons that, that fit culturally and but I know uh, that musically. So. The Crossing, his album from late last year, was on many top ten albums lists. Mm -hmm. All across the board. Yep, and uh, the band that he had playing with him, I I'm not sure you know, if they're still touring with him here or um, um, what, what the arrangement is. But Some. Um, I mean, it will be a band. It's not a solo show, but um, it's not exactly the same because the Italian gentleman that helped him make that album had to go back to Italy Right. at the end of the regular schedule of the tour, so by this being a rescheduled date, he won't be here. Yeah. Um, 17th. <laughs> Another double header. Yeah. Um, Grateful yeah. Dead upstairs with Cosmic Charlie and the Mad Iguanas. But downstairs, we have a Canadian band called the East Pointers. And they're more of, a, of a new folk. grass, bluegrass, yeah, yeah, uh, folk. Yeah, a lot, a lot uh, of folk influences, probably. Um, so that's a night where you get to choose your cup again. of tea. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, on the 18th, we've got um, college rock and adult yep. uh Alternative uh, legend, Sister Hazel. Yep, uh, coming back. Uh, yeah, this is their second time second here. Second time they played. Uh, it was about so a year and a half, July, two years ago. Year and a half, yeah, 
Um, so um, I, I've already had a lot of folks tell me that they want to oh, come yeah. to that because yeah. the first time was such a good time. Mm -hmm. They still sound great. Uh, they've been playing together for so long, and uh, they're just so adept at, at being, you know, uh, uh, great musicians and just, you know, improvising and, mm -hmm. and working their way through mm -hmm. some of their songs. So you'll recognize the songs, and they'll sound a lot like they did, you know, when you first heard them on the radio. Yeah. But, you know, they, they wind up making them seem new and fresh to mm -hmm. you. So. Uh, that, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, then we take about a week off yep. uh, leading into Labor Day weekend. Right. Um, and Labor Day weekend, we've got Robin and Linda Williams mm -hmm. kicking things off with right. our friend Scott Miller. Right, uh, opening. Uh, he's going to be the opener, um, you know, one of Virginia's great uh, yeah. singer-songwriters. Yeah. Um, Scott Miller in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Started out with the V-Roys. So, I mean, lots of, lots of story songs there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Things like Across the Line are yeah. just fantastic stories. Yeah. Uh, and Robin and Linda Williams, of course, Robin is uh, working on hosting a new mm -hmm. uh, series PBS. here on PBS mm -hmm. that includes uh, the Harvester as uh, you know, one of the, the focal points. So uh, we, we certainly want to turn out a big crowd and mm -hmm. uh, you know, get support behind you know, all these great Virginia musicians. Of course, right. Robin and Linda are out of, I believe, the Stanton or mm -hmm. Harrisonburg area, yep. somewhere uh, in that neighborhood. Um, so uh, they, they've been doing this for longer than they probably want me to say. Yeah. Um, but uh, they, they're, they have, they're, uh, they're seasoned veterans. Let's they put are. it that way. They, they've played up and down the uh, 81 corridor and yeah. throughout Virginia. Uh, they, if, they, if there's a folk mm, festival, they've played it. And uh, they've also written uh, 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 some contenders for songs to be Virginia's next Virginia's, song. Of course, yes. yeah, Virginia doesn't have an official state song. No. Uh, but... Um, yeah, they, they have written contenders, have. You know, songs that have been introduced as, as being the next song. So, yeah. you know, it, it's likely that you may see some uh, something like that here that you'll be, you know, playing uh, from now on. Yep. Um, then we've got Cracker here on the 26th yep. with more uh, adult alternative. If right. you like uh, Sister Hazel, you're also going to like Cracker. Definitely. Um, then uh, Country with Little Texas on mm -hmm. the 31st. Uh, 30th. Excuse me, on the 30th. Yeah. Then we wind down the month with another double header. You're right. Um, of we got the babies, yep. um, and yeah, of course they started out with John Wade as their they lead did. singer back in the late seventies, early eighties. Eighties uh, power pop, and they, yeah. they've still got they've you know, great rock on. sound. Yep. Um, and then uh, downstairs uh, from North Carolina, uh, their newer band, psychedelic rock, it's a duo, duo. Um, uh, the Blue Footed Boobies. Yep. Um, so if you don't come for the band name alone, uh, yeah, come on. What else can we make you do to come to the Harvester? So. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to have some fun musically that night. Um, we always want to see boobies. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, uh, coming up in, in June, we've got Richard Marks. We've got Roger Handy and Friends. Yonder yes. Mountain String Band yes. is on sale. Colt Ford, Colt those Ford. tickets are selling fast. Daryl Scott Scott's coming on back. The One of the greatest um, shows I ever saw here. Uh, Steve Roll on the 14th. Will Hogue. Uh, the Dowdy Brothers, local band, the Bluegrass Band, right. will be here on the 22nd. Uh, the Best Almond Best Band, Best band on, the on the 26th. Leanne Those Rimes. tickets are going. Yeah, I mean, they're selling out everywhere. They are hot and, and they're, they're selling out everywhere. That means and, that as those other places sell out, people are finding where they can go to to see them, and they're coming to the Harvester. So we'll have a lot of folks from and, out of state. And for much that like show. we tell you, this will be one of the smallest places you will get to see these guys. Yep. Uh, got Leanne Rimes on the 28th. We got Livingston Taylor on the 29th of June. Uh, so it's much you know, more fun with 500 of your friends than it is 10,000. Absolutely. Uh, as always, go to harvester-music.com, look for those tickets, call, call Rex. Call 540 Guitars. And um, as we wrap up our first five years, we had some friends of ours that we sent did. in Facebook messages. Your, your wife coordinated a she lot of did. that. Uh, we, we refer to Joyce lovingly as the Queen Bee because right. she you know, helps keep this hive uh, working. Yep. And um, so uh, as we close out and uh, get ready to see you again next week, uh, we're going to close Let's out with some of those. Of those. We're going to close out with some of those anniversary messages, so enjoy these words from, from some of our musical friends. Howdy, friends. I'm out here in Big Sky, Montana, representing for the Harvester, and uh, wanted to say congratulations. Happy five-year anniversary. Y'all have done a fabulous job there, and uh, we really consider ourselves fortunate to be part of uh, y'all's family. So can't wait to make it back this fall. Got a couple shows with Mr. Paul Thorne, and uh, y'all have a wonderful one. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Hey, Queen Bee and everybody at the Harvester. We want to wish you a happy five-year anniversary. Time sorry sends her love. We hope to see you soon. Hey, what's up? Kyle Forey here. I just wanted to wish the Harvester Performance Center a happy fifth anniversary. Well, what's happening, folks? 
It looks like the Harvester Performance Center is going to celebrate its fifth year around the sun. That's awesome. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for bringing big music to a small town. I'm extremely thankful to be a part of it. Hope to get back soon. Happy birthday.